So adipose tissue is a connective tissue within the body that stores fat. Now there are many different types of fat within the body, within this connective tissue, and there are many functions of fat. And so within this video, I'm going to troll you with specific information regarding a certain type of fat which is classified as visceral fat. But first, I'm going to create a viral hashtag. Sorry, where are my manners? That's better. And so increasing your body fat percentage to obese levels and morbidly obese levels is extremely dangerous for your health. I just want to give you the sufficient amount of time to process the idea that obesity is not good for your health. That's enough. And so this connective tissue, adipose tissue, is just referred to as fat within the body. But adipose tissue, and it does come in, di in different forms as I previously alluded to, contains adipocytes, which are the, the, the cells within adipose tissue, and these cells contain the stored fat. And stored fat comes in the form of triacyl glyceride. I've made videos about this. And tri a triacyl glyceride has a molecular structure of a glyceryl backbone and fatty acids. And when the fatty acids are disconnected from the, from the glyceryl backbone, those fatty acids can be, uh, can be burnt up in the mitochondria to produce energy. And ultimately, it is the fat within your cells which can decrease and increase in size in response to your energy balance. A caloric surplus, a positive energy balance, will lead to an increase in fat storage. Whereas a negative energy balance, a caloric deficit, can contribute towards a decrease in the size of your fat cells and ultimately a leaner appearance and healthier body composition. And so the idea that I want to get across in this video is that fat in itself is not bad for you. It has many vital functions in the body. But extreme levels of fat, whether that's too much body fat or too little body fat, it's absolutely a health risk, and this is not new science. This is well established. And so fat has many functions. For example, energy storage. You can think of your body fat as stored energy. But it also has other functions in, in relation to insulation, in relation to hormonal applications, and also protecting your organs from trauma. When you see people 4% body fat on the bodybuilding stage, absolutely, these are dangerous levels of body fat. This is not a healthy physique. And then conversely, obese and morbidly obese people. Again, this is not a healthy range of body fat. And so on opposite ends of the scale, we can understand how an extremity of body fat either way is not a healthy body composition. And I'll explain some of the issues later in this video. And so having body fat is not the problem. It's carrying too much body fat, which is the problem. It's a health issue. And so I'm going to focus on visceral fat, but first I want to explain subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat is the fat under the layer of skin, the fat that you can pinch, the fat you will be familiar with. And I'm going to refer to Arnold with a technical definition of subcutaneous fat. And I'm going to say something which apparently is revolutionary if you're in a caloric surplus you are going to store fat and so a discussion into adipose tissue is extensive and so i really in this video just want to cover visceral fat and i really want to help you visualize just how many health risks are associated with obese levels of body fat and so visceral fat is fat which is stored in the abdominal cavity and the issue with with visceral fat is it surrounds the organs now the benefit of this is it can be a cushion for your organs uh, which can protect you from trauma such as uh, an impact of some sort however conversely because it is near the organs that carries risks especially when you have too much body fat and it does surround organs such as the liver and pancreas and so we have extensive lists of research and indeed meta-analysis looking into visceral fat health risks associated with it training protocols to try and decrease visceral fat the science is not emerging in terms of obesity and morbid obesity and health risks. This is very well established and, and the range of health problems related to large levels of, of, of adipose tissue are hypertension, type 2 diabetes, metabolic issues such as DNA damage which, which can ultimately lead to, to severe disease. Adipose tissue, visceral fat can, can be thought of as a metabolically active tissue in terms of being an endocrine organ 
and therefore it releases cytokines which can cause an unwanted type of inflammation in the body. Now without going too deep into this, causing these sorts of inflammation and these sorts of metabolic issues which can be caused by having excessive amounts of visceral fat can lead to severe health complications. And in addition, we have compounding factors. So sedentary obese people will most likely have poor cardiovascular health because they're not active, they're sedentary. So when you add this into the, the, the levels of visceral fat and the, the health risk, you can see how these compounding effects, which can ultimately lead to very grave results. So in terms of measuring your health risk with obesity, it would be fair that saying applying BMI to your risk of, of disease is problematic, especially for people who are building muscle mass. And so I will accept that. However, BMI in itself is not completely useless when it comes to obese people who are sedentary as they're most likely not building muscle mass. And so it can give you a, an idea of, of their levels of health. However, a more accurate measure would be waist circumference. For example, waist to hip ratio, as this form of measurement has been successful in predicting health risks associated with obese people. And in, indeed, visceral fat it, it is an indicator of health risks. Now you can decrease visceral fat and not necessarily impact your BMI too much. If you do build muscle, for example, that is why using waist circumference is a more focused and perhaps accurate way of trying to assess your health risk and indeed your physical activity levels and nutrition will contribute towards your body fat storage, your energy balance. There are so many diseases uh, related to obesity, it's too extensive. I would have to make a catalog of videos just to scratch the surface. And that's what I want to get across to you in, the, in this video. And that is current scientific thought and that will always trump people's feelings. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science, I'll see you soon.